Hello friends. The topic for today's session is empowering teachers to protect child rights in school. Before we move on to understand how the teachers can be empowered for the same, let us just start from the scratch. First, let us understand what are child rights. Children are rightful citizens who are entitled to have some rights as any other individual living in a nation. Children's rights are human rights. As human rights, children's rights are constituted by fundamental guarantees. We generally assume that children are the miniature adults, but when it comes to the rights, we generally skip that phase. But of late, there has been a realization that the children too have their own rights and their rights needs to be appreciated and well guaranteed by the government of whatever nation they are living in. Even when it comes to the Indian government, the constitution of India guarantees all the children certain rights which have been specifically included for them. Like for example, these are number one, right to free and compulsory elementary education for all the children in the 6 to 14 year age group. This is done by Article 21A. Moving further, the second right given by the Constitution of India is right to be protected from any hazardous employment till the age of 14 years. Article 24 of the Constitution guarantees the same. Thirdly, the right to be protected from being abused and forced by economic necessity to enter occupations unsuited to their age or strength. This is guaranteed by Article 39E. Similarly, right to equal opportunities and facilities to develop in a healthy manner and in conditions of freedom and dignity and guaranteed protection of childhood and youth against exploitation and against moral and material abandonment. This is from Article 39F. Now, these are the specific rights which are being given to the children. However, this is just not in totality. There are other rights also because they are equal citizens of India just as any other adult male or female. Now, let us understand what are the other rights which are given to the children because of their being the citizen of India. The number one, right to equality given by Article 14. Number two, right against discrimination awarded by Article 15. Number three, right to personal liberty and due process of law given by Article 21. Moving further, right of weaker sections of the people to be protected from social injustice and all forms of exploitation by Article 46. Now, this was one which we had discussed in the context of Indian constitution that how Indian constitution is making its own efforts to award the child rights to ensure the rights of the children. But even at the international platform, there have been efforts by different organizations, by different United Nations bodies so that children get their own rights. There was a popular convention, the Child Rights Convention. The United Nations Child Rights Convention is a special convention for children under the larger human rights banner. So, the larger subset is the human rights and under that banner, there is a smaller subset which is talking about the child rights. The CRC explicitly protects the children from all forms of physical, mental, verbal violence and neglect. Let's understand what is the basic classification. It is just not possible that we discuss all the rights here. So we are just going to discuss that what is the basic classification of child rights. There are four kinds of child rights. Right to participation, right to survival, right to development and right to protection. Now as child rights, violation is a global issue. The child rights protection is also a global need. You can see from the different pictures that how children across the different nations, across different geographical settings, across different cultures, their rights are being violated in one form or the other. And it's not only the children who are living in poverty or children who are living in difficult circumstances that their rights are violated. There are people who are living in affluent settings, but they are not able to ensure proper rights for their children. Maybe because of the cultural setup, maybe because of the traditional authority picture which is set in the minds of the individuals, specifically the adults. There are occasions when the children are not able to get rights. And child rights violation is not limited to one or two countries. 
it has been observed from different researchers and different surveys that across the different countries, across the globe, child rights violation is an issue. Since child rights violation is an issue across the globe, so child rights protection also becomes a need across the globe. Now, coming back to India, the National Commission for Protection of Child Rights, known as NCPCR, was set up in March 2007 under the Commission for Protection of Child Rights Act 2005, which was developed by an Act of Parliament in December 2005. Idea behind the setting up of this commission is acknowledging that our children have rights and acknowledging the responsibility of the constitution that their rights are protected. That is why it has been named as Commission for Protection of Children's Rights. The Commission's mandate is to ensure that all the laws, the policies, the programs and administrative mechanisms are in consonance with the child rights perspective as enshrined in the Constitution of India and also the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. So we are abiding two conventions or we are abiding two standards for ensuring the child rights to our children in India. One is the Constitution of India and second is the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. Now why we are abiding by the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child is because we have ratified, we have signed that convention so it becomes a moral responsibility that we abide by the same convention and we ensure the rights of the children as per that scheme also. Let us understand how the children rights are ensured. The three P's of child rights. The three P's of child rights are provision, protection and participation. All these three things are provided for the children's rights. Then there are few reasons that why the child rights won't be provided and the child rights won't be ensured to the children. But in spite of these conventions, in spite of the constitutions, the ratification, in spite of the setting up of the commissions, when it comes to the children's status in the society, they are deprived of their rights in almost each and every society. The form of deprivation may be different, there may be economic deprivation, there may be a deprivation of health, there may be a deprivation of uh, equality or there may be a deprivation of the love which they are supposed to get. But they all are deprived, almost all of them are deprived of their rights. Children are subjected to neglect, abuse, violence and exploitation anywhere. Not just the settings outside the home but even inside the homes. When a child is being uh, sorted to violence or when a child is being sought to mental abuse, when he is being rebuked or whether the child may be abused sexually. So all these forms of abuse or all these forms of exploitation are happening inside the homes also. So it's not only the society at large which is harming the child or which is not ensuring the rights of the child. Even the settings within the home by the parents or by the primary caregivers at times the violation of the child rights do happen. There is some kind of abuse that may happen inside the school premises also. Now what kind of abuse can happen in the school premises? It may be in the form of bullying, it may be in the form of violence, it may be in the form of physical punishment which is given by the teachers. These are, these are just three examples of the kind of abuse which may happen in the school premises also. But again emphasizing the same thing, it is not happening only in school. A lot of it is what children suffer at home and in other non-school environments also. Now a child in class may be a victim of violence, may be a victim of abuse, exploitation which is happening inside the school also. Moving further, now let us come down to what we intended to fruitfully discuss in today's session is the role of teachers. Teachers play a pivotal role in the education system. Teachers play a pivotal role in the development of the child. It's after the parents that the role of the teacher becomes the most important. Now, but when it comes to child rights, at times teachers are variously seen as obstacles to child right education because they are considered as gatekeepers with an interest in retaining the traditional forms of the authority. Now these teachers are not coming up from somewhere upside. They are being developed by the society. 
the society has always maintained this uh, notion of traditional form of authority wherein the adults have all the authorities and children have very few basic rights if they have according to the depending on the culture of the country however they can be seen as collaborative agents willing and able to work now it's the role of the teachers which needs to be seen from several angles there needs to be an optical shift in how the teachers are looking at children teachers can be seen as collaborative agents also who are willing and who are able to work for the children if the teachers mindset of this traditional authority is shattered definitely they are going to look at the children from another angle and they are going to work in that direction so that the rights of the children are ensured the teachers duty is to protect children which does not come to an end once they are out of the school premises remember the role of the teacher is not just inside the school setup it moves beyond the school also it goes till eternity so the children are the ones who are most uh, in a sense affected by the teachers or influenced by the teachers after their parents at times teachers may be the ones who may be making the most impactful influence on the children even before parents so the teachers need to be sensitized enough they need to be aware about the child rights only then they'll be able to make a dent in that same direction teachers need to create a safe learning environment by identifying pupils who are suffering with problems or at risk and then taking appropriate action necessary to ensure the child rights for the children this is vital to ensure the children are safe at home and at school so the teacher has to work in this direction now let's just take an example if the teacher is teaching in a class and the child is coming to that class it's not that child it's not just the child which is coming to the classroom the child is bringing with him his home also his culture also his parents mindset also his parents rearing style also and if the teacher is sensitive to the needs of the children in the classroom they will be able to identify that children or identify few children or identify those children who are showing some kind of odd behavior and who may be suffering because of certain kind of abuse at home if the teacher is sensitive enough in this direction i'm sure the teacher would definitely work it out the teacher would definitely try to understand why the child is behaving in a particular manner and maybe even report to the parents or maybe even talk to the parents counsel to the parents also to ensure that the child rights are established at home also now let us understand what are the different essentials to equip with the teacher with the knowledge of child rights number 1 is knowledge of who is a child the teacher needs to really understand that who is a child now if we go by the definition a child is somebody who is below 18 years of age and is taken as a child so the teacher needs to understand that who this child is and the other allied aspects of the child development further the teacher needs to know the different rights of the children only if the teacher knows what are the rights of the children that the teacher will be able to work in this direction now if we talk of different service at present our teachers are just not aware about the rights of the children it may be a strange topic for them that the children do have rights but until and unless these rights knowledge of these rights is imparted to the teachers we cannot expect that the teachers will be able to protect the rights of the children which is obvious enough secondly the teachers need to have an awareness of the government schemes the programs for the welfare of children based on child rights the teacher cannot afford of not having an awareness of not having an information about the different schemes and programs which are being run by the government for welfare of children based on child rights now why this becomes important is because it's the teacher which is the link between the government and the general society for when it comes to children or for when it comes to the education perspective so if the teacher is going to be aware if i am going to be aware as a teacher definitely i'll be able to help the children in seeking their rights also but if i am not aware of those rights if i am not aware of those 
programs or schemes which are being run by the government, I'll be hardly able to help the children for the same direction. Now, let's take an example. If the teachers know about right to education, they'll be able to help the children in ensuring admission to different schools. But if the teacher herself doesn't know about these programs, the teacher won't be able to help. Thirdly, awareness about the child-related problems and violation of child rights. Now, we have an understanding of who is child, we have an understanding of what are child rights, we have an understanding of the kind of programs and schemes which are being run by the government of India. Now, we need to know the different violations of child rights, the different problems which are related with children or with childhood. If I understand as a teacher of the kind of problems which may be associated with childhood and the different kind of violations of child rights which may happen in different kind of settings, I will be sensitive for the same. If I am going to be sensitive for the same, I will be able to identify those children from the classroom settings who are seeking or who are being, uh, whose rights are being violated in one form or the other. Fourthly, the knowledge about the measures taken by the Department of Education and school authorities in the care and protection of child rights. Now, this is another aspect or this is another aspect of the knowledge which the teachers should be having. They should be aware of the measures. They should be having a clear cut knowledge of the measures which can be taken by the Department of Education and school authorities in the care and protection of children's right. If I know that a right is being violated, how the school can help or the what kind of steps the school can take. If I know that, only then I will be able to help the child in seeking redressal to violation of his rights. Moving further, the teacher needs to have an awareness on the legal provisions for the protection of child rights. Now, besides the role of the school, besides the role of the Department of Education, the child may have to seek a legal provision also when his rights are being violated. So, the teachers should have certain kind of awareness on this legal provisions also. Lastly, the teachers should have knowledge about various mechanisms towards the promotion and protection of the child rights. So, there needs to be a knowledge about the different advocacy programs also and different mechanisms also which can work towards protection and promotion of child rights. Now, if these five or six steps are being followed, only then we can expect that the teacher is going to be aware about the child rights. Now, if the, child, the teacher has this basic fundamental knowledge about the child rights, the teacher has that basic sensitivity towards the child rights, the teacher has that basic skill of identification of violation of child rights or the teacher is sensitive enough to identify those children in the classroom whose rights are being violated. Only we can then expect the teacher will be able to contribute to the protection of child rights in the normal classroom. Now, why teachers are being focused is because the teachers are not playing just a direct role. They can play an indirect role also in protection of child rights. Now, how the teachers can play this indirect role is they can develop in their own practice through which teachers can also act as legitimating agents of protection of child rights. If I as a teacher, I am protecting the child rights, definitely I am setting up a model in front of the other society members and they can model my behavior and they can see from that behavior that how the child rights can be protected within the setting. Modeling human rights values through their own changed behavior. Now, once I have accepted that the child has his own rights, the child has his or her own rights, I will bring out a change in my behavior. Now, if I model that behavior, if I model that human rights value in my behavior, the people from the society who are coming in my touch will be able to see that change and will be able to adopt, if not all, at least certain portions of the same. Secondly, they can convince parents and community parent members of the value of child rights. The teacher is not just a link between the government and the children, the teacher is also a link between parents and community and the child. And parents and the other community members, they consider teacher as somebody who is learned enough. They are considered teacher as somebody who can be seen to if they have a problem. So, the teacher makes a good impact or influencing impact on the parents and the community members also. 
so the teacher can convince these parents and community members about the value of child rights if not all again the same thing if not all even if a section of the population even if a section of the parents and community members are able to appreciate the value of child rights because of this discussion with the teacher the dent has been made some effort has started in this direction so the teacher can help in that same direction thirdly the teacher can assist the children in their learning and subsequent action now the disconnect between this point is that even our children are not aware about their own rights how would they be because we have never told them what rights they have so the child rights education becomes an important aspect and it should be imparted through the curriculum in one form or the other and the children should be made aware about their own rights the teacher should assist the children in this learning of child rights and the subsequent action which can be taken if the rights are being violated now let us see how the teachers if they have the knowledge of child rights what kind of impact it is going to have on the life of the children and what kind of impact it is going to have on the protection of child rights in the general society number 1 knowledge about child rights will enable the teachers in the promotion of them this is very clearly understood if the teachers do not have the knowledge about the child rights we cannot expect that they will be able to aid in promotion of the child rights in any kind of setting but if the teachers have this knowledge about the child rights they will definitely engage in that kind of effort and they'll be able to promote that knowledge among the children also secondly with the awareness of the government schemes and the programs for the child welfare the school teachers will be able to assist the children in their growth well-being and development it's clearly understood that until unless you have a knowledge about the different schemes and the programs you won't be able to help the children in the same direction but if you have the correct knowledge the appropriate knowledge you will be able to assist the children in their growth well-being and development thirdly there is a relationship between low awareness of child rights and adverse effects on handling child rights issues the research has clearly proven this that if the teachers do not have a proper awareness about child rights if the teachers have a low awareness on child rights or if the teachers have inadequate awareness on child rights then there is going to be an adverse effect on handling the different issues which are related to child rights number 4 by taking up suitable measures for care and protection of children in the schools the teachers can play a vital role in ensuring that all our children live in a safe and nurturing environment the idea behind all these child rights is to make sure that children are living in a safe and nurturing environment if a teacher knows about the different programs if a teacher knows about how these rights can be protected the teacher will be able to ensure that within the school setup at least the children are living in a safe and nurturing environment now since we are telling uh, since we have been acknowledging this fact that it's the teacher which is making an impact on the child not just within the settings of the school but even the in the, in the home also or even within the community at large also so if the teacher has knowledge about child rights the children will be living in a safe and nurturing environment the chances of children living in a safe and nurturing environment heighten as compared to if they do not have the correct knowledge another provision with knowledge on legislations for the protection of child rights the teacher will be empowered to assure care and protection to all the children now we have discussed that how the teacher can ensure safe and nurturing environment now if they have the knowledge about the correct rules they will be empowered to assure care and protection also to all the children which is a basic right of all the children with the knowledge on mechanisms for promotion and protection of child rights the school teachers can play a role of mediating agent in child rights protection system so the teachers again emphasizing their role they do not play just a direct role they do not just play an indirect role they play a role of mediating agents also in child rights protection system so the whole protection system needs to be developed so that the child rights can be ensured
to sum it up whatever we have discussed in today's session there is a need to provide training for teachers and to build the capacity of the schools to adopt a rights based approach the whole system needs to change its this direction our schools predominantly the city schools or whether the schools who are located in the rural areas they do not have this approach wherein they will be ensuring a rights based approach it's the society which is ensuring what they want to teach children and it's the society which is deciding on a larger level what they want to teach the children how they want to teach the children and how they want their children to be raised the choice of the child himself or herself is not being guaranteed or is not being sought after also obviously we cannot seek the decision of the child in all the matters but there are certain matters where the child's rights need to be respected also so there is this need that we provide training for the teachers so that they build the capacity of the schools also because it's the schools which are being built by the teachers the schools are not built by the bricks and the mortar but they are built by the teachers so if the teachers have that training they'll be able to build the capacity of the schools to adopt a rights based approach it also asserts that it is necessary to respect teachers rights in order to build the conditions in which they can respect the children's rights so our teachers also need to have that kind of autonomy our teachers also need to have that kind of freedom to exercise within their own classrooms within the curriculum also so that they can respect the children's right so to ensure children's right we need to give certain kind of rights so we need to give certain kind of freedom to the teachers also this shift of rights needs to be brought about in our schools teachers believes have a significant impact on how they interpret the curriculum we all understand that as individuals also how we are believing will definitely influence our behavior so teachers beliefs about child rights will have a significant impact on how they are going to interpret the child rights in the normal day to day curriculum for the children so if the teachers have this belief if the teachers understand that really the child rights are an essential part of a child's life definitely they are going to make an impact definitely they are going to make the changes in their day to day life and that impact in the curriculum can be seen moving further the need to provide more sustained training and support for teachers to enable them to adopt more inclusive approaches to involve children in decision making and to stop using physical punishment in the school is necessary so we need to provide adequate training also to our teachers at present if we talk our pre service program is not talking about the child rights in any form even in a minute form or in a simpler form it is not talking about the child rights so we need to make provisions for this kind of training which is enabling teachers to understand the child rights and adopt these approaches in more inclusive settings thank you all that was all for the session